Ayo hey, art nerds, what's goody? Today I got a somewhat short video and it's one that I feel absolutely passionate to make. So I don't really have a hard, hard script in front of me, just some notes, cause you know, I feel this is something that can add value to future creators out there. So to jump right into it, I'm gonna be reviewing Chainsaw Man the manga. Now, now wait, wait. It's not anything scholastic, I'm not one of these nerd YouTubers who try to analyze the story and over criticize to the point of nearly insulting the creators. Even though these YouTubers don't create shit and don't and won't ever understand what goes into making a manga story. Matter of fact, you give these people the artistic talent of Kim Jong Ji and they'd still create some garbage. Okay, sorry, I was going on a tangent there. It's just that that shit just grinds my gear, you know? Uh, by the way, not all YouTube reviewers are like this, uh, just some, and you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, back to my point about this video. So yeah, basically, what I want to do is review Chainsaw Man in a unique way. A way that I haven't really seen before on YouTube. And it's a review of Chainsaw Man for artists by a manga artist. We're going to be looking at what Tatsuki Fujimoto, author of Chainsaw Man, did artistically and the choices he made when depicting the story and the world of Chainsaw Man. And what we as aspiring artists and comics slash manga creators can learn and implement. And to make all this information easier to swallow, we'll break it down into categories. The paneling, the page flow, the shot composition, and the overall art in general. So let's get right into it. First, let's talk paneling. As I was reading Chainsaw Man, I was not only enjoying it, but I was also actively reading, meaning I was analyzing everything I looked at and one thing I noticed about the paneling is Tatsuki Fujimoto, similar to Junji Ito, does a lot of build up, as in per page. Fujimoto would set up the panels and the stories within those panels in a way where at the turn of the page there was a significant reveal or a joke or a twist. Another thing that I noticed about the paneling is Fujimoto was not afraid of not only squeezing the number of panels per page to add tension or using a whole page to add scale. On this point of scale, what we can learn is Fujimoto does not give a grandma's cookie dough what? about his page limitations. At least I don't think so. He will use as many pages as possible to convey whatever. Like he can use 10 pages alone to convey action or more. This tip is important because I find newer artists, and I'm not gonna lie, myself until recently, squeezing story sequences all for the sake of staying within the chapter limit. And that shouldn't be the case. Which is another thing we should take away when reading Chainsaw Man. It's artistically free and expressive. The operative word here is non-constrained by rules or tropes. Next, moving from paneling, let's talk about page flow. So Fujimoto isn't too complicated with his page flow and that's the thing. That's what we need to learn from him. You don't need to be. So long as there's no confusion in which panel is read next, you'll be fine. Fujimoto's page flow is more so done with the bubble placement than with the art itself. A wrong or misleading tip I see some people giving others is you need to create page flow with the artwork itself and to be honest, for newer artists, that's just complicated and a lot to juggle, especially for a beginner. Um, I know it was for me and honestly, you don't really need to do all that so long as your story is easy to follow and your readers are not confused on what panel is next. Shot Composition so I think this one is what's so integral about Chainsaw Man, especially in terms of hitting its emotional strides and making the audience feel something. Basically, if you go back and read Chainsaw Man, when there isn't balls to the walls action going on, most of the time the shot compositions are, are often close ups of characters faces from varying angles as they either subtly, mildly or intensely express emotions in a convincing and when it needs to be entertaining way. With such a silly slash cool premise and such a goofy protagonist motivation, you'd think Jason Man would fall flat in the making you feel things department, but it doesn't. Fujimoto loves telling stories through the expressions on his characters' faces, you know, like feeling Aki's pain through the look on his face, or silently chuckling just from looking at Power's subtly goofy grin, or feeling uneasiness from Makima's deceptive smile. Jesus Christ. To sum it up, a good chunk of Chainsaw Man is varying character expressions from varying angles. Finally, for the overall art of Chainsaw Man in general, all I have to say is simplistically brilliant. Not to say the art in Chainsaw Man is simple, in fact, you know, it's awesome and can be very detailed at times. What I mean is, Fujimoto shows you what needs to be seen, nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't seem like his number one goal is to create a really cool visual illustration, at least I don't think so. 
I just think that happens, just naturally, from him telling this story. In contrast to One Punch Man that wants to draw you in with the amazing art, then it's hilariously funny story and premise, Chainsaw Man tells you its story and the art is an amazing compliment to it. This is important because new artists often conflate good manga with god tier art, which is not the case at all. Tell your story first. And boom, that's the video. Chainsaw Man review for artists by an artist. A few more non-art or visual things I want to say about Chainsaw Man that I find would be useful for aspiring creators that I wish someone had told me was number one, your protagonist doesn't have to be overly complicated. Like Denji is simple in his goals and wants. What makes him enjoyable is watching him get to enjoy and react to the little things in life. Number two, it's okay and a matter of fact, it's very welcome to be different, to be unique. It seems some people believe there's a formula for making shonen manga or manga in general, and there isn't. You can just throw everything you think is a hard rule out the window. Chainsaw Man has an absolutely batshit crazy premise, and the manga is unbelievably brutal. And it's fine, it's still a shonen. It doesn't have to be a cringy, I want to become the greatest insert title here shonen. It's always a breath of fresh air to experience unique stories. Thank you all for watching this video, make sure to hit the like button, hit the notification bell for more videos, and don't forget to absolutely decimate the subscribe button as well. Let me know what manga to read and analyze next in the comments section, I make sure to read and respond to every and all comments. Till next time art nerds, deuces.